Greta would be considered one of the elders of the colony. Greta is a very gentle, um, soft-spoken woman on the surface, um, but she believes right from the get-go that they must leave. And uh, I think her decision comes from not wanting to leave, but not being able to stay. When I saw the cast list, you got to know that I was like, what are you talking about? Wow. Okay. Overwhelmed. Um, and we had two weeks of rehearsal, you know, Zooming first and then in person. I was so intimidated at first. I mean, for me, it was like showing up at the Olympics every single day and I had to bring my A game. Like, I was very nervous and, um, you know, so respectful of, you know, Claire Foy and Rooney Mara and, you know, Judith Ivey from Broadway and her body of work and, and Ben Wishaw, I mean, everybody. It was such an intense, um, serious film to be a part of, but we laughed an awful lot. And, you know, we um, spent all our days together. We were rooming together and the fact that COVID was all around us in a very intense way during the filming only added to the kind of structure and the kind of um, tightness of our world in the hayloft. I think COVID and being masked up until we shot was helped us in a strange silver lining kind of way. But we had a blast making this movie. I have always admired her work. Um, she's always sort of seemed Canadian to me because she's just such a, a worker bee and such a natural actress and so organic and so true to herself. And I've always tried to, tried to be that. So, I mean, um, again, she, she championed this project because she, you know, someone handed her the book, she read the book and she said, this is a movie. And if it wasn't for Francis, McDormand and then going to Dee Dee and then pulling Sarah Polly on board. This would never have happened. Kita was a, an artist. You know, we sat every detail of our dresses. The, the fabric was from in and around Stratford where the Mennonite women live. Every little, there were darning and there were repairs that the camera would never see that those women would have stitched up because they wore, they wear their dresses for years and years and years. And then they pass the dresses on to their daughters and on to their daughters. So Kita understood the necessity of the authenticity required for our, for our look. It was just an amazing experience. Um, wearing those polyester dresses for four months that don't breathe. I said to, I, I said, you know what? I have a feeling that these dresses and cockroaches will be the last two things that last if there's an apocalyptic end to the world. There will be, those dresses will exist, but uh, they are extremely comfortable to, to wear. Peter, I mean, when you see the movie, you know, it's hard to notice, but every single, no art is allowed on the walls in these in these colonies, but they're allowed calendars. So there's calendars everywhere. I mean, there was no detail left unturned. It was an incredible experience to, um, to, to the, every minutia of detail was was authentic. I cannot tell you how many people, younger people, have come up to me, and not just women, but men, women, younger. Um, women have come up to me, they can't even talk after they've seen the movie. They, they have no words and they um, simply cry and because it has touched something very deep in what is um, our potential and what is possible. 
and what is, you know, we live in a dark old world sometimes. And although this movie has its darkness, the light of the movie, the light at the end of the tunnel is, is the hope. And I think that that touches people in a very deep way.